Chapter 9 in the Phlebotomy Student Handbook covers pre-examination pre-analytical complications causing medical errors and blood collection. This again would be related to the phlebotomist. These are the chapter objectives that will be covered in this chapter. An overview. Pre-analytical pre-examination variables important when collecting blood, patient assessment, and physical disposition. When the patient comes in, we're going to assess the patient. Can we use either arm for blood collection? Do they have any history of fainting? Um, patient assessment, are they able to make a fist for us? Um, test requested, which would be the actual test. So an example would be a CBC. Specimen collection, specimen transport, and specimen receipt in the laboratory. So specimen collection, would the phlebotomist use a butterfly needle? Would we use a straight needle for this patient? Specimen transport, does the specimen need to be refrigerated, frozen, room temperature? Control, controllable variables, so physiological variables, so things that a patient has control of, their diet, their lifestyle, their exercise. We have control over the specimen collection variables. Are we going to collect via capillary method? Are we going to collect via a butterfly needle? Uncontrollable variables would be biological influences, environmental influences, and under underlying medical conditions. For example, patients with diet who are diabetic coming in for a fasting test, this would be an uncontrollable variable that we need to take into consideration when drawing these patients. Basal state. The early morning, approximately 12 hours after the last ingestion of food. Laboratory results on basal state specimens are the most reliable and desirable in the hospital setting. Diet, exercise, emotional stress, obesity, menstrual cycle, and other conditions can cause changes in the basal state. Diet, the term fasting refers to abstinence from nutritional support such as food and beverages except water. We highly encourage patients when they're fasting to still continue to drink water. The required time period necessary for abstaining varies from test procedures to be performed. It's traditionally an 8 to 12 hour fast. Before collecting a specimen, the healthcare worker should ask the patient if he or she has eaten anything and confirm the last time they had something to eat. Blood composition is significantly altered after meals and consequently is unsuitable for many clinical chemistry tests. If the patient has eaten recently and the physician still needs the test, the word non-fasting should be documented both on the requisition and directly on the specimen itself. If the phlebotomist has to explain fasting restrictions to the patient, the instructions should be thorough and clear and emphasis on the important points of the procedure. There is also written instructions that we can also give the patient as well. Turbide or lipemic serum. If a patient has recently eaten fatty substances, he or she may have a temporary elevated lipid level. The serum will appear lipemic or cloudy, and I will show you an image of this in class. Because lipemic serum does not represent a basal state, and many indicate some chemical abnormalities, documentation about the appearance of the serum may be useful to the physician. Obesity. Obese people generally have veins that are difficult to visualize or palpate. The vein is not accessed when first punctured. The healthcare worker must be careful not to probe excessively with a needle. Damaged sclerosis or occluded veins. Obstructed or occluded veins do not allow blood to flow through them, and sclerosis or hardened veins are a result of inflammation, disease, and patients' veins have been repeatedly punctured. They become scarred and feel hard when palpated. These particular type of veins feel hard and cord-like when palpated. Because blood is not easily collected from these sites, they should be avoided. A thrombus or thrombi or solid masses derived from the blood constitutes that reside in the blood vessel. A thrombus may partially or fully occlude a vein and in much occlusion will make venipuncture more difficult. Allergies, Patients have allergies to decontaminating agents, so chlorhexidine has been reportedly used as an alternative to decontamination skin. Chlorhexidine is also used during blood culture procedures. Latex-free tourniquets, gloves, and bandages must be used for patients who have these allergies to latex, and that is included in our interview piece prior to drawing the patient. Exercise, long-term effects versus short-term. In general, moderate or excessive exercise has an effect on laboratory test results, but it's up to the physician to interpret the effects. And exercise also has some effects on hemostasis. Stress. Emotional stress can cause 
a slight elevation in the white blood cell count. It can cause a transistent decrease in the serum ion levels and abnormal hormone cortisol, albistrol, renin, thyroid stimulating hormone, TSH, prolactin values. We would wait to draw a patient if they were excessively crying as well, because this could also increase the white blood cell count in the patients. Anxiety can increase blood constitutes of albumin, fibrinogen, glucose, cholesterol, and insulin. Hyperventilation causes acid-base imbalances, increased lactate levels, increased fatty acid levels. Circadian rhythms, some hormonal levels decrease in the afternoon. An example of this would be cortisol AM. Collecting specimen during the designated time period, this particular sample needs to be collected between 8 and 9 a.m. is important for proper clinical evaluation. Posture, changing from a supine or lying position to a sitting or standing position causes body water to shift from the intervascular to the interstitial compartments and tissues. So the enzyme protein, lipid, iron, and calcium levels are significantly increased with changes in the position. Please be aware of this. Start market, remember that this causes an increase in these values. Positional pseudoanemia is a posture-related condition with changes in hematocrit and hemoglobin results. Therefore, we need to take into consideration if a patient's laying down, we notice low hemoglobin, but they were drawn later and setting up, they might have this particular condition. Travel issues affecting laboratory results. Travel over several time zones affecting the dermal rhythm and several analytes, including hormones, are affected by this as well. Age, laboratory test results vary considerably during the stages of life. Blood cholesterol and triglycerides increase as a person ages. Mastectomy, patients who have undergone a mastectomy, surgical removal of the breast often have resulting lymphedema on the side of the surgery, and the stagnant flow of tissue fluid in the area may make the patient more prone to infections. The patients, when prompted, when we ask, do you have an arm you prefer, might disclose this information to us, and then we can make the assessment that we would have to draw on the opposite side, um, the arm that did not have a recent mastectomy, and it is, it is a double mastectomy, we get a physician's order for a foot draw. Venipuncture should never be performed on the same side as a mastectomy, unless approved by the physician. Edema, swelling can be localized or diffused over a large area of the body. Veins in these areas are difficult to palpate or locate, and the specimen may become contaminated with the fluid. Menstrual cycle, menstrual blood loss is the single most common cause of iron deficiency anemia in women. Do not collect more blood than is absolutely necessary so as not to increase the negative effects of the additional blood loss during venipuncture. Medication and drug interference. When collecting blood to determine blood levels of medication, in most cases it would be collected just prior to the next dose. False increase or decrease in laboratory values can be impacted. An example of this would be a vancomycin level, which is an IV antibiotic. We would draw levels either for a peak or a trough, and I will go over those in detail, but they would be collected in a what's called TDM, therapeutic drug monitoring, so it would be a time test. Many prescription drugs can interfere with clinical laboratory determinations. It can physiologically alter the levels of blood constitutes measured in the clinical laboratory. Infection. Many patients have transmittable diseases such as hepatitis that can be passed from one patient to another, so we want to avoid touching the site for blood collection after the site is cleaned. Blood collection equipment should remain sealed in a package until the time of blood collection. Vomiting. Have the patient take deep breaths and use a cold compress on his or her head. Inform the patient's physician of this complication, especially if they're being drawn for what's called a glucose tolerance test. Because they are given a drink, if they were to get sick 30 minutes um, prior to have, have already consumed the drink, we would have to cancel the test. Um, if it's 30 minutes after ingesting the drink, we would continue. Other factors affecting the patient, gender and pregnancy age, geographical factors, and weather, and we will cover these in detail in class. Complications associated with test requests and identification. Identification discrepancies, so improper identification is the most dangerous and costly error phlebotomists can make because it can be life-threatening. The number one patient safety goal for the Joint Commission is improving the accuracy of patient ID. 
We're going to refer to Chapter 10 for more details on identification procedures in various circumstances. And I will provide detailed examples of how misidentification happens in class. Time of collection, early morning specimens are most commonly requested in the hospital settings because a fasting specimen is preferred. If a phlebotomist is running late, the specimen must be collected after an inpatient has eaten breakfast and would require a special notation about the non-fasting condition, both on the requisition and on the specimen. Requisitions, checking the requisition to match the laboratory tests requested with the appropriate type of collection tube is essential to minimize the amount of blood collected from each patient. Tourniquet pressure and fist pumping. Laboratory test results can be falsely elevated or decreased if the tourniquet pressure is too tight or is maintained too long. The pressure from the tourniquet causes biolog biological analytes to leak from the tissue cells into the blood or tissue and vice versa. This is what would be known as hemoconcentration. Some, some enzyme levels can be falsely elevated or decreased because of tourniquet pressure that is too tight or prolonged. Pumping of the fist before venipuncture could, should be avoided because it leads to an increase in the plasma potassium, lactate, and phosphate concentrations. Needle position and failure to collect blood. I will review this grid in class in detail. You can view it on your own here. Failure to draw blood. Again, needle position during the Needle insertion, the phlebotomist glove index finger can be used to help locate the vein above the needle site. The needle may need to be moved or withdrawn somewhat and redirected, and we will show you how to do this safely in live draws. Defective tube. On occasion, a test tube will have no vacuum because of manufacturer's error. This is where the tube might push back against you. The age of the tube or tube leakage after a puncture, and needles for evacuated tube systems have been known to unscrew from the barrel during venipuncture as well. If this happens, the tourniquet should be released immediately and the needle it should be removed. Backflow of anticoagulant. The patient's arm should be placed in a downward position, the tube top in the upright position to avoid risk of backflow of an anticoagulant from the blood vacuum tube into the patient's circulation. For the hospital patient unable to extend his or her arm, we're going to raise the head of the bed. Fainting or syncope. Syncope is the transition and frequent Frequently sudden loss of consciousness due to lack of oxygen to the brain results in an ability to stay in an upright position. Syncope can be caused by a variety of reasons, hypoglycemia or low blood sugar, hyperventilation, cardiac, neurological, or psychiatric conditions, and medication levels. We're going to ask ambulatory patients if they tend to faint or if they have ever previously fainted during a blood collection. This is that question, have you had your blood drawn before? If so, how did it go? This would prompt them to let us know so we can have them in a lying down position on an exam table. If a seated patient feels faint, the needle should be removed and the patient's head should be lowered between the legs and the patient should breathe deeply. The healthcare worker should stay with the patient at least 15 minutes until he or she recovers or until nurse or physician takes over. A towel gently applied to the forehead and a glass of juice or water may help. Um, we traditionally give patients water because we don't know if the patient's diabetic or not, so we don't want to give things with sugar in it. Hematomas. Hematoma can occur when the needle has gone completely through the vein, the bevel opening is partially in the vein, and not enough pressure is applied to the site after puncture. This is an example of a hematoma. This is a severe hematoma, and these are caused after venipuncture. Hematomas. If a hematoma begins to form, the tourniquet and the needle should be removed immediately and the pressure should be applied to the area for approximately two minutes. You will see a bubble form above the needle. The needle continue, If the bleeding continues, a nurse should be notified. Petechiae, small red hemorrhagic spots appearing on the patient's skin, indicates the minute amounts of blood have escaped into the skin's epithelium, which looks like this. Excessive bleeding patient on anticoagulant therapy and or those taking high dosages of arthritis medication or other medication may bleed for longer periods. Pressure must be applied to the venipuncture site until bleeding is stopped. That concludes Chapter 9, Part 1. Please proceed with Chapter 9, Part 2 to continue with this PowerPoint slideshow.